Suppose again that at these prices, the profit maximizing production plan is to produce this quantity of output using this input bundle. So that we know that at this production plan, the marginal revenue product of labor is equal to the wage and the marginal revenue product of capital is equal to the rental rate. Now we've seen that when output prices, P, change, we don't get any change in the cost minimizing ray because we haven't changed wage or rental rate so we haven't changed the slope of the isocost budget and therefore haven't changed where these tangencies lie. So when there are changes in output prices, the only effect we're left with is what we call the scale effect. Does the firm scale up or down as a result of a price change? And we saw that if the output price goes up, the firm's going to scale up, move to a higher isoquant, and when output prices fall, it's going to scale back. Well, the same thing is going to happen when we have changes in input prices. And the easiest way to see that is to go to the second step of the two-step profit maximization method, where we drew the marginal cost curve. So the marginal cost curve tells us where we're going to produce once we know what the output price is. So if we have the output price P, we're going to produce where price is equal to marginal cost. So this X is going to be the X on that isoquant, the profit maximizing quantity. Now suppose that one of the input prices goes up, either the wage or the rental rate. If my input prices go up, then my marginal costs of producing are going to go up. And so we're going to get this upward shift in my marginal costs. And that means the intersection with price is going to fall to the left of where it fell before. I'm going to end up producing less. I'm going to scale down. So an increase in input prices is going to cause me to produce less when I can adjust both labor and capital. What about a decrease in the input prices? Well, of course, that's going to do the opposite because it's going to lower my marginal costs. When you lower the marginal costs, the intersection with price is going to be to the right of where it was. We're going to increase output, scale up. So it's going to cause an increase in how much we'll produce. So we'll still have that scale effect that we had when we had changes in output prices. The difference now is that we have a second effect, which we'll call the substitution effect. So the substitution effect is similar to what we saw in the consumer model. In the consumer model we said the substitution effect always says do less of what's become more expensive and more of what's become cheaper. Same thing's going to hold here. Suppose that the wage increases. If the wage increases, then W goes up in this fraction, which means the fraction is going to get bigger in absolute value, which means the slope of the isocost budgets is getting steeper. We're used to seeing this from the consumer model whenever the price of the good on the horizontal axis increased, we got a steeper budget constraint. So in order to reach this isoquant, this level of output, we're now going to be at a tangency that's going to be on the steeper portion of that isoquant. If we're trying to fit a steeper line to the same isoquant, we're going to end up on a steeper part of the isoquant. So we'll end up at some tangency like this. And if we still want to produce this level of output, we're going to have to do it at a different cost minimizing input bundle. An input bundle that has less labor and more capital. Well, labor has become more expensive, so we're substituting away from labor and towards capital. And as a result, the whole cost minimizing ray is going to now be steeper. The same thing is going to happen if we see a decrease in the rental rate. If we see a decrease in the rental rate, capital has become cheaper, so we're going to substitute towards capital and away from labor, which relative to capital has become more expensive. And you can again see it in the slope of the ISO-cost budget. If the rental rate decreases, then what's in the denominator falls, which means the fraction is increasing in absolute value, we get a steeper slope. So these input price changes are going to give rise to steeper cost-minimizing 
ways. For any level of output, we're now going to use less labor and more capital. If, on the other hand, the wage fell, then we would see a decrease in the numerator, so the fraction would become a smaller number in absolute value, our budget would become shallower. Fitting a shallower budget to this isoquant means we're going to be tangent somewhere in this shallower portion. So we'll get some tangency like this. And as a result, the cost minimizing ray is now going to be shallower. The same thing's going to happen if the rental rate increases. If the rental rate increases, the denominator goes up, which means the fraction falls in absolute value. We get a shallower budget and therefore a shallower cost minimizing ray. And again, this should make intuitive sense. If the wage falls, labors become cheaper, so we're going to substitute to its labor and away from capital. If the rental rate increases, capitals become more expensive, so we're going to substitute away from capital and therefore to its labor if we continue to try to produce the same quantity as before. So these input prices and decrease in the wage or an increase in the rental rate will cause us to end up on a shallower cost minimizing ray from the origin. So now we can put these two effects together in one picture. Going back to our isoquant graph, put labor on this axis, capital on this axis, let's draw in our isoquant for the currently profit maximizing quantity x, and let's put in our cost minimizing ray for the current wage and the rental rate which will give us that input bundle of capital and labor that we had before. So currently, we're profit maximizing at this production plan. Now suppose the wage goes up. We know we're going to end up on a steeper cost minimizing ray. So we're going to end up somewhere on a steeper ray, somewhere here. We also know that we have a scale effect that says when the wage goes up, we're going to produce less. So we're going to produce below the current level, which is represented by that isoquant. So if we have an increase in the wage, we're going to end up steep array below this isoquant, so somewhere in this region in here. So this region is where we end up if we have an increase in the wage. If we have a decrease in the rental rate, we're also ending up on a steep array. But now we have a decrease in an input price, which means the scale effect says we're going to end up producing more. So we're going to produce more, but on a steep array. So we end up somewhere in this region. If we have a decrease in the wage, we're going to end up on a shallow array somewhere over here. And a decrease in the wage is a decrease in an input price, which is going to cause a positive scale effect. So we're going to produce above the current level of output, above this isoquant, but on a shallow array, well, that's going to put us somewhere in this region, leaving one, less, one more region, which, of course, will be what happens when we have an increase in the rental rate. An increase in the rental rate means we'll be on a shallow array, but it's an increase in an input price, so it's going to have a negative scale effect. It's going to cause us to scale down. Scale down, but on a shallow array, puts us in this region here. 